I remember when the Lakers first came to Los Angeles, you had many days uh, or nights when they were games that there were very few people that were at the sports arena. Their ball players actually would go out on a flatbed truck with a microphone and announce there was a game. As it went to the forum, it became far greater show in which people then viewed it as the place to be. I'm Bernard Parks, Councilman, 8th District, City of Los Angeles. Uh, I've been a city employee almost 50 years, a former chief of police, and I've been following the Lakers since they came to Los Angeles. Elgin Baylor was phenomenal uh, as a ball player. He was a guy that would average 20 some points and 15 rebounds every night. But when you talk about the top ball players, often his name doesn't get mentioned, but he was one of those that started the, the, the term of hang time. He was one of those that suffered at the hands of the Celtics for year after year. He was probably one of the greatest ball players that ever played. I was born in Beaumont, Texas. My family moved to Los Angeles about a year or so after I was born. I grew up within walking distance of where the sports arena is. I was 18 before I realized you needed a ticket to get in the Coliseum because we used to just climb the fence. You know, the thing at that time, uh, which you would be looking at the Dodgers, uh, you know, because you had that Sandy Koufax, Don Drysdale era, uh, and then you had the uh, the Rams were here, and, and at that time also was tremendous interest in track and field. But the Lakers, like I said, in their time at the sports arena, uh, I don't think really had caught on yet. It wasn't until the big dispute with the Coliseum Commission that Ken Cook decided, I'll go build my own stadium. That's when I think they became unique. The uh, forum was kind of the place you had to be. And so folks would go there as the ball players came on that people identified with. I'm working my way through the police department. I joined in 65 and went, worked a variety of assignments. I uh, was fortunate enough to get promoted through the ranks and eventually in uh, 97 become chief of police. But it was a chance in which a good deal of my time in the department was spent in South Los Angeles working 77th or what we call South Bureau, which is in charge of most of the city area south of the Santa Monica Freeway. So you had a personal uh, relationship and contact with the area around the Coliseum and Sports Arena. <laughs> I don't think anybody believed you had a chance to get Kareem. And then it was the, kind of the foundation that had building blocks to say there was eventual championship. But he was always the, also the common influence. He was never excitable, played the game, did his double-double, went home. The only time I really saw him get emotional was one of those championship games where he made this basket and ran down the court with his fist pumping. Our personal involvement started years ago when uh, the Michael Coopers of the world and Norm Nixons of the world kind of adopted my son. They would allow him to come to the locker room and he could visit them. One of my daughters found out where Norm Nixon lived and, and, and on her way home she found a way to walk by and knock on his door and wave at him. And uh, Shaq called my wife Mama. Uh, they had a relationship and she called him Big Baby, you know, and things like that. So those are times that you, you have these personal relationships. Byron was a great high school ball player locally. And I think when uh, he came to the Lakers, it was well documented that there are people that on the team that were incensed that Norm, who was part of at least one championship, that uh, he was gone. So they were gonna make Byron earn his stripes. And they found a way to punish him in, in uh, their uh, practices to where they wouldn't let him make a, a, a shot. They would uh, try to block everything he did. They would push him around, see how tough he was. He won, he won them all over because he was super talented and he wouldn't give up. I never understood why Byron, who went to two championship series in New Jersey, uh, didn't stay there. And they haven't had that success since he left. And then he was coach of the year 
in uh, New Orleans, and he didn't stay there. But to see him come back home, uh, and from Inglewood, uh, city of Inglewood, to be at the uh, Laker coach, which is basically was his lifelong dream, is just a phenomenal thing. Many people don't get to live that. Didn't get it. Rebounded off to McAdoo. They're 13 seconds away from the championship. And now the Los Angeles Lakers start the countdown. Seven seconds, five seconds, four, three, two, one. The Lakers are the world champions. When they started winning, and when you think about the, the uh, five championships that went in that era, uh, when you think about it, it could have been seven. Uh, if you remember the pass that Worthy threw, <laughs> and, and that one sh should not have occurred. And then the year that uh, you had both... Uh, uh, Byron and Magic with hamstring pulls uh, that set out most of the series. So it could have well been seven uh, championships in that time. On Friday, June 16th, the world watched as the Los Angeles Lakers won their second consecutive NBA championship. On Monday, June 19th, Los Angeles celebrated with a victory parade with over 500,000 fans in attendance. This scenario, reminiscent of last year's Democratic National Convention, provided the opportunity to show the world once again that the LAPD is a world-class law enforcement agency. We had to fight for him because invariably somebody would ask the question, how much is that costing the city? And you say, some things are just imposed on you. How do you have a city and say, we had a championship, but uh, we checked the books and we can't afford one. Those are all things that put a spotlight on your city for days and weeks. So you, you had to make it uh, a situation that was joyful for the spectators, but was respectful and safe for those who were on the buses and family members because you did not want it to get out of hand. So it was one of those controlled situations, but yet allowing people to have fun because you didn't want to lock it down to where people would say, you know, I, I went to the parade, but uh, you, you didn't have any fun. But that was the balance that you had to seek also, when we had, uh, I think, the uh, last big uh, uh, championship, uh, they ended up, in uh, because LA Live had been built, they then moved the ceremony to the Coliseum, and we were able to give a uh, resolution from the city in their honor. Event. So these are the kind of things that uh, have been a part of supporting them and being a fan, but also understanding the significance of what they've meant to the city. Championship. Right. Lakers win the championship. What? <laughs> no. yeah, that's it. How's that?